Thank you. Pleasure to be here, and I really want to thank Karen and Nessa for all their hard work in organizing this. And um, I did show the uh, uh, itinerary and packet to a colleague of mine in Minneapolis, and he said, "Well, hasn't she only been there six months?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, cheers and thanks. So today I'm going to talk about two public art projects that I've done in the recent past, and in fact, the mapping of joy and pain is a project that's ongoing. And in um, broad terms, my work has to do with kind of trauma and recovery, but we might also think about uh, trauma, pain, stress, doesn't have to be a major trauma. Um, but, and then this idea of healing and how place and nature might have um, something to do, to, to do with that, to say about that. So this project, um, which features writing with nature, is called the Table, Table for Contemplation and Action, a place to share beauty and fear. And this, uh, this young woman is writing a note, and she's um, at a table, a sculptural table that I designed, that's set up in the architecture building at the University of Minnesota, and it's, so it's got many, many repeat visitors. The students are here for three years in a row. So this table sort of descended mysteriously into this public courtyard, which is available to faculty and staff as well. And uh, you find out about it by reading a small little mysterious book. But as time went on, they find out about it from each other. So you're invited to write about stresses at this table and actually to deposit them into this glass vessel. And it probably doesn't come as a surprise to many of you that um, Students are among the most highly stressed populations, <laughs> at least in the U.S., and uh, probably goes worldwide, and also faculty. So I was interested in what, what could be a potential overlay to our existing architectures and interiors to help with this idea of sort of contemplation and stress reduction. Uh, this uh, is a central copper square, and it's um, changed by me often to have a single unusual element of nature as a sort of contemplative moment. This is the large glass vessel, and as you can see, here's the uh, messages that are stacking up, and the comment book, paper, and pencils are, are available at the table. <clears throat> so this gives you an example of, this is bark. So instead of, uh, you know, the potted rubber tree in the corner that's dying in your office, <laughs> you know, we don't really see that kind of nature anymore. So we're really, I'm bringing in things that are unusual, I've noticed students, you know, touching these, stacking these, playing with these, and that's been uh, really gratifying to me. So there's a couple um, premises that this project relates to that contact with nature, especially vegetation, has a beneficial effect on physical and psychological health, and there's a lot of um, research that supports this. <clears throat> so here's this young woman. Um, placing her message into the vessel. And this was staged because I actually never see, I see the messages piling up. I'm able to sort of look in there and see why I'm so mad about, um, but I actually don't see people do this very often. So I said, would you please sit and, and write it for me? I know that I've written and found it very uh, helpful. <clears throat> so <clears throat> writing itself, um, uh, looking into the work of some control of research, writing especially that expresses emotions, stressful emotions, has a beneficial effect on health. But I have to say, instead of all the rarefied events, this is how, you know, you're invited to eat and write and hang out and have meetings. It's not all about the rarefied contemplative. It's about this sort of um, just day-to-day -day contact. And we have um, an upper level in this building that's open to this interior courtyard. So it's actually kind of a beautiful object just to observe. Mm -hmm. Sunlight comes across and changes. But a lot of times people are just eating McDonald's there. So that's perfectly fine. <laughs> so there's the little, the little comment book. And the comment book explains about the project. But it also invites people to write about the project. And so you'll, you'll see some of these um, comments, like thanks for the opportunity to jettison extra thought back. I like the smell of pine in my hands. I have pine needles. <clears throat> um, and you'll read a few more. But you know, some students would do dr elaborate drawings. They'd copy out quotes from Camus and Thoreau. <laughs> and I'd be like, are these my students? You know, I, was, I was very impressed. And of course, some are like, could you please?
please add beer to this. <laughs> so they're not all, again, rarefied, but very positive. It was very, you know, exciting and gratifying to have this happen. And a little bit on the rarefied, one day I came down and somebody, a student, on the, I later found out, somehow made a vase out of a light bulb and put a, left a flower there. So there was kind of, and then one day I, um, somebody had left like a book of, a book of hours there. So it was really very strange. Like it was starting to almost conjure some kind of quality of the, the spirit or something in this, uh, you know, very secular academic building. <clears throat> so to collect the messages when it's full, you see how full it is, I've devised a tool that I'm extracting and I'm placing in the bowl. Because the idea it is, by social contract, I would not read the messages. You could name the name if you wanted to complain about the dean. You could do that. And that um, they would be collected <laughs> and would be advertised in advance so students could come. So here you can see, a, perhaps you can see burning of the messages. And I've been taking them out. And here are all these. And here's a few students writing a few last minute things they want to have burned at the end of the semester. <laughs> Because the idea is that, and here, there's some students, they, actually, they, they come, he wanted to carry the, uh, we go outside and uh, the messages are burned. And people found that very gratifying, I have to say. One woman, she just said, this is just so helpful, and a little tear came down her. So, I mean, it was very, um, it was very powerful for us. <clears throat> Perfect. This is the second project I'd like to talk about. Um, it's the mapping of joy and pain. And, um, and you're going to see up at the top these kind of strategies about sort of healing. Um, so what is this? What is this map? It's a um, it is a large laser cut map of Minneapolis and St. Paul, where people are invited to color with gold where they've experienced joy, and uh, gray where they've experienced pain. And here's what it looks like. It's a sculptural environment. That these, these sort of signal the project, sort of talk about the gray and the, and the gold. This is the mapping table. These are my student assistants making the very first marks on the map. And so it was a, <clears throat> a project that was um, installed last summer in the public spaces of Minneapolis and St. Paul. We literally <coughs> carried this thing around for uh, all summer, like, help me move again, you guys. <laughs> So um, it was temporary, it traveled to different parks. Um, it's a sculptural physical setting in the era of virtual social networking. Um, open to anybody, it was advertised, but many people just found it. Participatory, meaning everyone welcome. It was facilitated, meaning I or my students, mainly I would think I was there all the time, and my students would come in and out to help people find a place, not necessarily to define what pain or joy was to them, but to help them maybe find an intersection or something. So a lot of joy was colored. Here are the, here are the map, the lakes of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Much joy colored, um, and pain was colored. And the interesting thing about pain was people talked more about pain. They colored maybe more joy, but they talked more about pain. And I'm just gonna show you a few quick shots and also tell you um, maybe a couple stories. But what was fascinating to me is people that wouldn't meet otherwise would be showing up at this table, talking to each other, finding places. For example, this is a park in St. Paul where everybody here decided that um, really I should orient the map how we were sitting in St. Paul and they all got around the table because this wooden map comes off and we had to turn <laughs> the map. So I thought, I'm, I'm with you. I'll, I'll try that. Let's do that. Um, a mother and a son um, talking about pain and joy, and you can see here's his, he's got the joy, he's got the pain in each hand. <laughs> and you know, he really, you know, kids really did get this, and he really was having a conversation about, you know, pain and joy with his mother. You know, he felt very nervous at this park. This park has a big waterfall. He goes, I don't want to just map um, happiness at the house. You know, I felt really scared walking along that trail. So having a pretty intense conversation, something I hadn't really overheard before. And so what I did was I did have a small notebook with me, and I and I you know would keep track of all the amazing things that would start to happen. Because to tell you the truth, I did not expect talking. I thought, oh, mapping, 
After that first table I did where I didn't get to see anybody put the messages and I didn't know, I thought, well, how fun would it be? Maybe a mapping of beauty and fear. No, that's not quite right. Pain and joy. But it'll be quiet, it's reflective, it's mapping. Instead, the minute they start to pick up the pencil, they're telling stories. And even people, like he, he was lovely in that he was so happy to move to his new uh, house. And he said, and I said, oh, well, uh, do you want to say anything more about that? Oh, my neighbors, and uh -huh. And then he, this was at a lake, and he did a walk around the lake with his dog, and he came back, he said, you know what, your project made me think a lot more about joy, and I want to come back and map more joy. So you can read a lot of, you know, just hand me the gray, lots of pain. This was a bunch of schoolgirls mapping their school. <laughs> so I'll just show you a few. But, you know, here's the people that would, would uh, you know, we, we met uh, people that lived in the parks, students, uh, a law student, people that wouldn't meet. So all ages, intensities. Um, I've got about a minute left, so I'm going to tell one brief story of a man who um, came up to the, we said, would you like to see our map? He came up and he said, I just want to color all of St. Paul gray. And we said, well, uh, okay, why, you know, why don't you do that? And he, and he said, well, I'm being, I think I'm being evicted from my house. I, you know, and he said, you know what, I, I won't color all of St. Paul Gray, but I'm going to color a big black dot. And he said, you know what, nobody ever asked me how I feel. And I really want to thank you for this, you guys. And he shook our hand. <clears throat> High school kids, when someone came in a wheelchair, we brought them out to them. So now you can see the size and what the map really looks like. Uh, this was a film crew at the Walker Art Center. And the fact this guy said, do I mind if I'm uh, filmed while I map? I insist upon it. <laughs> <laughs> so my last slide, what happened? Um, it became this social space, um, like I said, that I didn't expect. I expected it to be more about this. Uh, memories were triggered. Um, there's a kind of a testifying and witnessing, you know, by me as a kind of listener and witness. Um, People would speculate on what the marks meant. Hmm. You know, then they'd start to make up stories, which was really interesting. Um, and just to close, it really was a place of transformation. I was transformed. I really became mesmerized and deeply respectful of the stories of my fellow citizens. I could not believe all the stories that were embodied in, uh, you know, a 10-year-old boy who loses his father and asks me to map for him hmm. the hospital. So just incredible story. So I was transformed. And I think, I think many parts of the public, many people in the public were transformed. One woman said, I realize I need to have more joy in my life. So thank you very much. Yeah.